Yeah, Jay Murugan, hi, Ravi Kishor, good evening, Atmiya, good evening, Corbin, yeah, it started, are you able to hear me? Just a minute. Are you able to hear me now? Is my voice is clear? Good evening all. I'm not. Oh, okay. Thank you for your response. Yeah. Okay. So sorry for the delay. Okay. Shall we start the session now? So in yesterday's class, uh, we already learned how to install Arduino ID, how to program, but uh, there are some issues, that's why I didn't show the output. So shall we see the output now? For that, let me open Arduino ID. Yeah, just wait for a few, uh, few seconds, I will show the output now. Okay. So first we have to open our Arduino IDE. Let me open the new one. I'm going for go to files. Uh, before that, let me connect. Okay. Let me open the video now. Are you able to see the board? Is it clear? Let me connect the board into my PC. Okay. So now, we need to go for files, examples, 
basic here I am going to click blink program you have to install IDE first then you have to install ESP8266 package also first download Arduino IDE and then go to Google or search for ESP8266 package you have to copy that link and you have to paste it here go for files go for preference here you have to paste that link and click OK and then you have to go for library manager not library manager board manager here you have to search for like ESP8266 here it will show like ESP8266 by ESP8266 community. You have to install this. After that, close your Arduino ID and reopen this. You will get like, go for tools, board. Here you will get like ESP8266. And then you have to select your particular board which is ESP12E module. And you have to select port 2. So my port number is component 7. Here it will show like. Node MC 1.0 ESP 12E module on component 7. So now what I am going to do is that we have to upload this code into our board. Okay. So this is our example program. Go for this icon, upload icon. Now I am going to upload this code into our board. So click on this. Here first it will compiling our sketch. And then it will start uploading. Here you will see this. See, it's uploading now. Let's wait for a few seconds. We are only using inbuilt LED. I didn't connect any external LED. I'm going to just use inbuilt LED. Here, this is our output. You can see here, right? So, one second it will be high. One second, it will be low. This will continuously run until if I uh, close my program or uh, unplug this uh, USB cable. So, this is our output. Is it clear, guys? Is this clear? This is yesterday's output. We are just blinking our inbuilt LED of ESP8266 board. So, shall we move to uh, today's topic? Okay, thank you for your response. Let me close this. Okay. So now, what is today's topic? Today we are going to see three things. First one is ADC which means analog to digital converter. Second one is pulse width modulation. And then third one is deep sleep in ESP8266. So let me give a short introduction about these uh, topics. First one is ADC. Analog to digital conversion. It is a process by which analog signal, I mean continuous voltages, are converted into digital signals. Digital signal means what? Discrete value. So, we are going to convert continuous voltage or analog signals to digital signals or discrete values. That can be processed by a digital system like a microcontroller. In ESP8266, there are one or more ADC channels that can be used to measure analog signals. Here we have 10 bit resolution. So, the resolution of the ADC in ESP8266 is 10 bits, which means that it can represent analog voltages as a number between what? 0 to 1023 because it's 10 bit, right? So, 0 to 1023 is limit. We can vary this value between these uh, digits or numbers. 
So second one is pulsed modulation. It is a technique which is used to control the power which is delivered to electrical devices like uh, motors or LEDs. In ESP8266, pulsed modulation can be implemented on any GPIO pin. The duty cycle of the pulsed modulation signal determines the amount of power which is delivered to the device. Yeah, Ananta Shrikar. Yeah, you are giving the correct answers. I noticed that. Very good. Okay. The duty cycle can be adjusted by changing the pulse width of the signal which can be done using the function named like analog write function. We will see this in uh, depth in pulse width modulation topic. So third one is deep sleep. So deep sleep is nothing but deep sleep is a low power mode that can be used in ESP8266 for what? To conserve power. So when the device is not actively processing data in deep sleep mode, the devices shut down most of its component and goes into a sleep state. This mode can be useful in battery power devices where like uh, power consumption is a concern. To exit this deep sleep mode, the devices need to be reset. We need to reset the device or we need to wake up just by using any external event. We will see everything in depth in uh, later session, okay? I am just giving the introduction about these three topics. So now let's see one by one in detail. So what is the first one? Okay, so ADC is the first one. So in ESP8266 12E, it have one only one ADC pin. If you notice your board in the sense, you can get to know that there is only one pin which is called like A0. That is easily accessible. That means that those board can read analog signal. When referring to the ESP8266 ADC pin, you will often hear these different terms like ADC, T out, pin number 6, A naught, analog pin number 0. You can call it by any one of the name. No, Asma, we are not going to use Arduino board. We, uh, we use uh, when, when it then says in later session, when we are uh, talking about the communication protocol, everything and all, we are going to use multiple boards. We need to communicate uh, uh, each other, right? We need to make that board to talk with each other. For that purpose, we are going to use uh, Arduino board and everything and all. For now, we are just going with ESP8266, not with any other board. Okay, so all these terms refers to the same pin in the ESP8266 and coming to its resolution, I have already told that it's a 10 bit resolution. And coming to the third one which is input voltage range. So the ESP8266 ADC pin input voltage range is 0 to 1 volt. I am talking about if you are using the bare chip, this one. If you are using the bare chip, the voltage range is 0 to 1 volt. However, most ESP8266 development boards comes with an internal voltage divider. So, the input range is from like uh, 0 to 3.3 volt if you are using development board. Development uh, board in the sense, for example, like ESP12E node and you get like uh, VMOS D1 mini. And if you are taking back chip in the sense, that is uh, chips called uh, ESP07, uh, like 12E chip, etc. So then, you can see here. This is the analog pin. In development board, this is the analog pin which is mentioned as A0 and in bare chip, this is the analog pin. So now let's do one thing. Let's write a code. Let's go for a code. For that, I'm going to open Arduino IDE. So see. First, what I'm going to do is that. Let me erase this. Let's start from the scratch, okay? So first, what I'm going to do is 
First we are going to initialize analog pin. For that I am going to use the function name called constant integer. I am going to take like analog pin. We have only one analog pin which is A0. So I mentioned here. So now what it will do in the sense this allows a programmer to tell the compiler that a particular variable should not be modified after the initial assignment in its declaration. The variable name is analog pin. So then we are going to create a variable called sensor value. For what? To store the value. We have to read the value and we have to store it in a particular variable, right? For that I am going to use like integer sensor, no, we don't have to take sensor. Let me take like, I am going to, here I am going to use 10k potentiometer to just vary the value. We are going to vary the value from 0 to 1024 using pot, which means potentiometer. So I am going to give like pot, which is equal to 0. So the potentiometer value will be stored on the variable which is what pot or to make it even better clear let me give like pot value okay so now inside void setter i am going to start with serial dot begin inside i have to pass baud rate what it is 9600 let me explain this. So in Arduino programming, this is a common function which is used to initialize communication with serial port. The serial object is used to allow the board to communicate with the other devices or a computer through USB connection. We are connecting this board through our compu uh, computer or laptop, right? So it should be communicate. For that purpose, we are using serial.begin. Inside, we need to pass uh, baud rate. Baud rate in the sense, for a second, how many bits are transferring? As default, we can give like uh, 9600 and there are so many baud rates here. I will show you in the, uh, during the output time, okay? So this is the default value. Now I am going to use void loop. So inside void loop, now what we have to do is that first we need to read. We need to read the analog pin value and we need to store it in a variable. Already we have created analog pin pot value. So here I am going to give like pot value. Here I am going to store the value which is read from the pin. So for that I am going to use the term called analog read. Inside the bracket we need to give this pin name which is analog pin. So we are going to read this analog pin using the term called analog read. We are going to read the data from this pin. So we are using analog. That's why I gave analog here. If you are using digital in the sense, you have to give like digital read, digital write, digital pin. Here I am using only analog. That's why I gave analog read. I am going to read the data from this particular pin and I am going to store that value in the variable called pot value. So now let's print the value. For that I am going to use serial dot print. So inside what I am going to do is that I am going to print that value which is pot value. Let me give a colon here. Okay. Semicolon. Now again serial print ln. Here I am going to print the actual value. What? Which is pot value. Let me give pot value. So now I am going to give a delay. Inside delay, you should give the delay in milliseconds. 
I'm going to give just one second. One second which is equal to thousand millisecond. For that I'm going to use delay. Inside I gave thousand which means one second. For every one second it will update the value in your output box. You can also use directly in uh, a, a not in uh, analog read. For just clarification I gave like uh, first I mentioned the pin number. Uh, sorry, a uh, pin number and pin name. Some of you uh, might get confused, right? That's why I uh, gave it clearly. If you see analog pin is it, you can get to know. Yeah, that is uh, the pin number is A naught, analog pin, and the port value is the variable we are going to store that, right? Okay. So now, this is our program. Now what we need to do is that, let me, okay, are you able to see the video, I am going to take the potentiometer, this is 10k potentiometer, I am going to face like this, okay, there is three color, see I am going to uh, face this potentiometer like this, there is three wire, one is for analog pin, one is for VCC and one is for ground. Orange color, red color and brown color. So the center pin, the red pin is analog pin. I am going to connect this to the A0 pin. The brown wire which is VCC, we need to give power, we can give 3 volt. And the orange wire is ground wire. I am going to connect this to the ground. Now we just need to upload this code into our board. Before that let me select the port component 7. Then it will change like connector. So now we need to upload this code into our control. Why I mentioned constant here in the sense, in the program you cannot, you should not change the value. You can't change the pin number in the uh, program. If you men uh, mention constant uh, there in the sense, you cannot change, you should not change until like until the end of the program. You cannot change that pin number. That's why I gave constant. Okay. I have uploaded Okay. See, now the pot value is 21. If I change in the sense, you can get to know. No. No, it doesn't change. Just a minute. Just to see the output in the 
Control, you just need to go for this one, serial monitor. Open this, you will get the output here. To change the baud rate, go for this, you can change any baud rate here. But default you can give 9600, is pretty much enough. There is some issue with my project modulation, I think. Just a minute. Port value, analog read, and analog pin, which is A0. Okay. Okay, it's working now. You can see the change here. Let me open it again. Okay, now see. I'm turning this according to the value also change. 310. It's decreasing. It's increasing. 1024. If you are turning this knob, according to the rotation, the value also change. The resolution is 10 bit, which means 0 to 1024. By changing this, your value will also be changing. If you connect one LED in this board, using this, you can adjust the brightness of that LED. You can adjust the speed of the motor using this pot. I am just uh, showing that the value is changing here. If you are using any LED or if you are using any motor in the sense, you can adjust the speed or you can adjust the brightness just by using this potentiometer. Is it clear? I am rotating this. That is why the value is changing. I am increasing now. 258-499-754-1024. Now, I am decreasing. So, this is how you can control your LEDs or motors. Okay. At the initial stage, the potentiometer is set like that. If I am fully... Turn on this, see, if I am turning this, it is increasing. If I leave it like this in the sense, it will show the same number. If I am turning like this, I leave it here, you can see 261, it will print like 261 until I am changing. If I am turning this, it will change. I already used this, that is why it... Uh, at starting it will show like 22 and I did not connect the wire properly. You have to connect your wires properly. Okay. So now we can move to the next one. Okay. Is it clear everyone? This is not the voltage actually. I am just showing it in a number. If you want to show it in voltage, you have to use one calculation. This is just analog value which is between 10 2024. If you want to show the output in the voltage in the sense, you have to use some formulas. Like how to convert that number from voltage, that, like that. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to interface LM35 temperature sensor with ESP8266. This is an analog sensor. That's why I take this. We already saw how to uh, show the variation between the analog values. 
Now we can move for this one. For example, here I am taking one analog sensor which is LM35 temperature sensor. Okay, so let's see. This is the LM35 temperature sensor. It has three pins. You can see here like one is for VCC, one is the output pin and another one is ground pin. So, this is a temperature sensor that outputs an analog voltage proportional to the temperature in Celsius. It is a popular choice for like uh, temperature sensing applications due to its accuracy and its low cost and ease of use. So here you can see the pin out. It has three pins. One is VCC, another one is V out, which means output pin, and another one is ground pin. So LM35 operates over a temperature range between like uh, minus 55 degree Celsius to 150 degree Celsius. So the output voltage is linearly proportional to the temperature which is a sensitivity of 10 millivolt per degree Celsius. Note this sensitivity of 10 millivolt per degree Celsius. So the output analog voltage can be converted to a digital form just by using ADC so that a microcontroller can process it. Okay. Now let's see. Okay. So this is about the internship. This is the right time to switch your master class into your internship. So these are the benefits you will get in this internship. What are they? 30 days of live sessions and you can get access uh, to all the records and you will get all the source code and you can get all the downloadable presentations and after registration you will get your internship confirmation letter. And after finishing the 30 days master class, you will get your internship certificate. And this is the actual amount, uh, which is we have discounted fee like 799. Use this registration link to register for internship. So these are the ads on project you will get in this internship. What are they? Smart street light using LDR and IR sensor. Monitoring soil moisturization using ASK sensor. Gas leakage detection using Arduino IoT cloud and IoT based heartbeat monitoring systems and much more. Like a BME 280 sensor readings to the real time database, web based remote serial monitor, sending email using SMTP and telegram request ESP8266 sensor readings. So use this chance to get your internship. So, okay. So before that, let do one program. So using that LM35. Okay. So let me erase this. Let us write from this scratch. Okay. So now I am going to write a program for LM35 interface with ESP8266. We can't provide any components during this internship. You will get all the uh, recorded videos of this uh, master class. There is a separate video uh, for this uh, master class. There is a recorded session of this. You can get all the recorded videos. You will get all the source code. So using that, you can build your own project. You should buy components on your own. You can try just by uh, seeing the videos and also you will get your source code. We can't provide any hard, uh, hardware. You will get all the material except the hardware. You will get all the materials, everything and all. Just by studying that and seeing that, you will uh, you can build your own project. Okay. So here, I am going to initialize a float variable because we can get uh, the output in uh, decimal numbers, right? For that I am going to use not variable sorry okay float 
I am going to give a name like voltage reference. For that I gave like V reference. Here I am going to mention like 3.3. This variable represent the voltage reference of the ESP8266 ABC. Our ESP8266 uh, board's voltage is 3.3 volt. That's why I mentioned here 3.3. Again, I am going to initialize a float variable called resolution. Float resolution. Here I am going to do a small calculation which is I am going to divide 1023. Why 1023? Our resolution is 10 bit. So 0 to 1023. That's why I gave like V reference divided by 1000. 23. So, this calculation determines the resolution of the ADC or the smallest voltage increment that can be detected by the ADC. Okay. So, now we can move to void setup. So, inside void setup, first what we have to do? We need to mention serial dot begin. Serial dot begin inside you need to pass your baud rate which is 9600. That's it. Now we can move to void loop. So inside void loop, float is a data type. Float is nothing but a data type. Float, integer, everything is a data type. We can get the output in a decimal values, right? For that, we need to give float. If you give integer in the sense, you will only get the integer uh, digit without de decimal point. So, inside void loop, what we have to do? Now, we need to read the sensor pin and we have to store it in a variable like uh, when we do in the pod. So, for that, I am going to use float data type. I am going to give variable name called temperature. Here is where I am going to give void is nothing but the written type. Void is written type. Float temperature. Now what we have to do? We need to read that analog pin. For that I am going to give like analog read. Here you can directly mention A0 sorry A0 like this. In uh, earlier program I gave like constant integer. I have already mentioned in the global variable. Right. You can also give like this. Directly you can give A0 here. So I am going to read this A0 pin using this analog read function. And I am going to store that data in the temperature, sorry, in the variable called temperature. So, the data type is float. So, now to convert this ADC reading to your voltage value. Someone have asked like this is a, how to give the voltage value, right? So, here we are going to do. To convert the ADC reading to your voltage value. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I mentioned it. Thank you for notice. I changed this. Yeah. Sorry all. Thank you for noticing this. I changed this. Okay. So now we are going to use one calculation for converting the ADC reading to the voltage value. I am going to give like. Temperature, the same variable which we have already mentioned that, which is equal to the calculation is I am going to multiply this temperature by what? Resolution. So it multiplies the temperature value by the resolution value. 
Here resolution is what? B reference divided by 1023. So the calculation is temperature which is equal to temperature multiplication by, uh, multiplication by resolution. So now another calculation for converting the temperature value in degree Celsius. For that again I am going to give like temperature which is equal to temperature into 100. So see this, this line multiplies the temperature value by the resolution value to convert the ADC reading to the voltage value. This one, this line multiplies the voltage value by 100 to convert it to a temperature value in degree Celsius. This is the base of C programming, not Java or Python. You don't have to know that. You just need to know the basic C programming and just basic of embedded C. That's all you have to know just to coding all these things. You just have to know, have the knowledge of C language. That's enough. 3.3 is nothing but your board's voltage. ESP8266 board's voltage reference is 3.3 volt. In Arduino board you can have like uh, two voltages. One is 3.3 volt like 3 volt and another one is 5 volt. Up to 5 volt you can give connection like. So in ESP8266 there is only up to 3.3 volt. This is our board voltage value. That's why I mentioned here 3.3. Just to convert our ADC value to the voltage that's why I mentioned here 3.3 volt. Just go for Google and search for the uh, board. In the picture you can see there is a voltage called 3 volt. But some sensor might work in 5 volt, not in 3, uh, not in 3 volt. For that you can go for V in pin. Using that V in pin you can get high voltage according to that sensor. Okay, so this is our calculation. Now we need to print the temperature value. I am going to use serial print inside I am going to give like temperature I am just going to print the temperature like to clear let me give like degree celsius ok so now let's give a delay for every one second it will upload to the ok so this is our program so now we need to connect the hardware part let's go the resolution is like this is our board voltage Voltage reference is 3.3. We need to divide the 3.3 by like I have already told you the resolution is 1023 right. That's why I divided it by the voltage reference. 3.3 divided by 1023. This is our resolution. For calculating this uh, to the ADC uh, sorry to calculating this ADC to the voltage we need to multiply the temperature. Temperature means the reading data. We need to multiply the temperature by the resolution. To convert the value into degree Celsius, we need to multiply it by 100. So now, see this. This is our LM35 sensor. You can see it in the PPT. I am going to place this. I am going to place this flat side towards me. Here I gave. Okay. So now let's give the connection. Just 
Just give me a minute. Okay, so now let's give the connection. So the first pin from the left side, we need to connect this with, okay, for your reference let me open the PPT here. See this, from the left side, first pin is VCC. So I'm going to connect this pin with VCC which is 3 volt. I gave it here. So now the center pin is this I have to connect with V out which is A naught. The center pin have to connect with A naught. And the third pin which is ground. We need to connect this with the ground pin. That's the connection. So now let's upload the program. Okay. The board and port already selected. Let me upload it now. Okay, it's compiling. Okay. So now let's open the serial monitor. Here it will print like 35 or the, it will vary 35.16 and 35.34.84 like that. So this is our output. If I rub my hand and make a little more heat toward this flat side in this sense, let me hold this for a second. Here you can see the variation. According to my body temperature, the value also change. Let me rub my hand, rub my finger and I am going to place this in the flat side. If I hold this, you can change the values. You can see the change. See, 38, 35. So according to my body temperature, it will, not my body temperature, according to the heat. So if I take my hand, you can also see the difference. So this is the output. Is it clear everyone? Is this clear? Okay. I think it's already 8. We already have, uh, we are going to learn like 3 topics, right? ADC, Pulsive Modulation and Deep Sleep. But today we don't have much time. So sorry for this. Let's see the remaining topic in tomorrow's session. Is it okay guys? Are you clear about the these things which you have learned? Yes, Jaime, tomorrow I will explain the code once again, okay? 
I will explain the two codes again in tomorrow's class. Thousand twenty three is nothing but the resolution of ADC. Ten bit, its resolution. So the value is zero to thousand twenty three. In tomorrow's class, we can go for pulses modulation and also deep sleep. And I will once again explain the program to you. So sorry for today. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all for your response. Let's catch up at tomorrow's session. Thank you have a very nice